We've caught up with Derek Smart here in the whole child room during GDC to get a look at Line of Defense, your latest game. Uh, for those unfamiliar with Line of Defense, what kind of game is it? It's a first-person shooter uh, for hardcore fans. You've got infantry, vehicles, aircrafts, and lots and lots of weapons of mass destruction. You've got planetary areas and you've got space areas, and it's all seamlessly integrated to one unique experience. Seems a little bit like you're trying to do everything at once, but what kind of experience do you want to do you want the player to have in, in this game? Well, I've always, all my games have actually always done everything at once. Um, with Line of Defense, I wanted to make things a little tighter, a little uh, nicer, as it were, and be able to have more populated areas and, you know, increase player's experience. What I want really in this game is to promote more team play. Uh, it's not a run and gun kind of game. I want to make sure players that who are have their friends of friends of friends can all play together uh, whether you're an infantry guy who likes to drive vehicles or you're, you're a guy who likes aircraft or you're a guy who wants to be the sniper in the tallest building I want you to have fun and I want you to have fun with your friends not just running out there with a gun on your own that's never gonna work in this game so so what did you feel like that that games out there today didn't do didn't what, what are you doing wrong and that you're trying to do better in this game well, I don't, I don't look at it as, as right or wrong. I mean, I just look at a different way of doing things. All my games have catered to a specific market, and which is a hardcore gamer, the guy who actually has to read a game manual to play my games. Um, with, with our defense, I wanted to move a little bit away from that by making sure the game is easily accessible, anyone can play it, you don't need to read a manual to do it. You don't need to go through, you know, crazy key combo combinations or menu options. So uh, anybody who's played any FPS game or any typical, you know, shooter game will be very, very well at home in this game. And that was the, the goal from the beginning. But you are keeping true to some of your, your earlier work. And you're, you, you mentioned that you added space just to appease those fans that, that are sure to want that. Yeah, it's not a space game. Uh, even with um, when I did All Aspect Warfare in 2009, um, it's a first-person shooter, but you know my fans were really, really mad at me, so I add, I tacked on uh, a space portion uh, after the fact as a hack. So with line of defense, I wanted to get away from that. You know, I don't want them getting mad at me because they are my bread and butter, and I'm very, very, very uh, loyal to the guys who buy my game. So I figured, from the word go, we're going to put a, a compelling space environment. We're going to build the uh, the entire game around that, but it's really not a space game. But people who like space combat. They have the space area to go to. They have the stations in space. You have carriers. You can go in them. You can fight in them. You can run around them. You can fly around. It's there. So that way, I keep my install base happy and while attracting uh, new new gamers who will probably like this kind of game. You mentioned one thing that that uh, you had gotten criticism over is that your games are always big, huge, and that there aren't always that many points of interest, or it's not that sort of dense gameplay. Um, what, what have you tried to do to avoid it? Because when I looked at it, it lo still looks huge. Yeah, well, with my previous games, I mean, uh, a, a, a planet, uh, based on a planet which is, you know, 256 square kilometers is really nothing. Uh, anybody who's played my games knows that's like a postage stamp um, when compared to the size of my previous games. And the reason we even made it that big is because I like flying games, and all my fans like flying games. We like we like flying around in helicopters, guns, you know, uh, uh, fighters, you know, shuttles, and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But with those kind of assets, you really need space. Most games that have aircraft keep them in the boxed area, so you really feel like you just it's just a vehicle with wings. My games have never been like that. So even though we built these areas smaller, made them more populated, and made more interesting, we had to make them a little larger to accommodate the aircraft, because if I didn't do that, of course, my fan base, they're going to be pissed at me. And, you know, next thing you know, it'll be all within it, and they're not going to play my game. So. <laughs> and that takes us to the business model. What, what kind of business model are you, are you planning for line of defense? And, and what, um, 
how do you try to make it uh, as, as successful as possible? Well, everybody wants to make money. I mean, we all, I, I love this as a hobby. It's something I love doing, but by the same token, if I don't make money at it, I'm never going to be able to fund my games. So because everyone's talking free to play, and when they think about free to play, they think about, you know, import knockoffs with everybody else and their mother-in-law is doing, I don't want to do that. Uh, the free to play, uh, issue right now is just it's just a business model it's no longer about the game it's about how you market the game it's really software as a service so when i thought about how i was going to do a business model i figured i'll just do two uh and you know make everybody happy so you have the free-to-play guys who can download the client uh you get a uh, you know basic weapons some bullets and and well wishes and you go off and play the game the guy who buys a client gets a, maybe a better weapon to start off and they get access to certifications earlier and they get access to experience points earlier so you can still play against somebody who bought the game uh, and the, you can still play the game. The longer you play the game, you can get those uh, assets as well. Pretty much with the free-to-play side, I'm just catering to the gamer's angst-ridden um, <laughs> uh, impulse control. You know, if, you, if you're if playing free-to-play and it's going to take you two days to get a thousand experience points to get that one sniper rifle, well, hey, you know, buy the client. And people are going to start screaming, pay to win. I'm going to tell you right now, that's just rubbish. Uh, every single game is pay to win. Um, for the media, you, you, you fork out money to buy a game that's not free to play, it's pay to win because that's what competition is about. So if somebody buys a sniper rifle or they buy a vehicle and you think that it's pay to win, that's okay. But the fact of the matter is you're not buying skill. You can buy player skill. So somebody who gets uh, a lowly pistol and somebody who buys uh, a high-powered sniper rifle, well, guess what? There are circumstances where you're going to take a headshot with that guy in a sniper rifle. There's always ways around the system. So just because somebody bought something doesn't make them good at it. You're not going to be able to buy a fighter and think you're very good at it when somebody can outfly you or they can shoot you down. So we're going to have that pay to win arguments. I'm just going to ignore them. <laughs> All right, sounds good. But um, with that, you still want to have some sort of balance between the two sides that are fighting off each other, right? So you, 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 or are you are you looking at any 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 means of sort of looking at that, or, or will that sort of play out itself? No, uh, we're not going to do any balancing whatsoever. Uh, it's a it's a it's a PvP game. And once you start getting into issues of, of game balance, it's a whole different territory. There's no PvE here. So it's pretty much taking two scorpions and dropping them in the jar. And, and saying, hey, you know what, we're going to come back in an hour and see who survives. So there's not, everybody has actually the same weapons. It's not like one side has this sniper rifle and this side has a sniper rifle, so we have to do game balancing to see if one is balanced against the other. No, they all have the same weapons, the same vehicles, the same bullets, the same pain, the same everything. So there's really no need to do any kind of game balancing because it's just a waste of time because guess what? Gamers are going to get around that anyway. All right. So what's the roadmap ahead now? You're, you're closing in on release or what, what's going on? We're late alpha. We're looking to go beta in a couple of months and we're hoping to release uh, end of June, all things being equal. And um, our schedule shifted slightly because we moved from one game engine to the Havoc engine. So we've got a lot of tweaking to do, a lot of you know custom stuff that we need to work on. But we're expecting to get the game out in beta um, in May and hopefully release uh, end of June and um, hope for the best.